Number one, you ought to be glad you can see anything. God's given you eyesight, and uh, you're ahead of a lot of people. Amen. You're, some people are blind, some are spiritually blind, and you uh, can see the truth and see physically as well. Amen, amen. Brother Taylor, Dad looks good on you. I think you're going to make it. Happy Father's Day. Father's Day coming up Sunday, so uh, all you try to get your fathers to come to church with you, and let's uh, fill this place up and have a great time here on Sunday morning. All right, let's go into the Word of the Lord tonight, 2 Timothy chapter 2, 2 Timothy chapter 2, and uh, let me tell you something about the Word of God if you don't already know it. It has the answer to all of life's problems. No matter what situation you get into, you can go to the Word of God and find help. Everybody say help. Now, our world offers a lot of help. Uh, there's a help desk, uh, a nurse link or something where you call and get medical help. Anybody ever had to call and and talk to somebody on the other end of the line and get some advice about something. Uh, so there's, uh, there's, there's help that comes in that direction. And uh, there's, there's uh, uh, places on the internet that you can search and, and try to get help for different things. But when it comes to the word of the Lord, you can get uh, help that is uh, absolute truth and uh, will help you in every area of your life, no matter what it is. If you're depressed, if you're lonely, if you're having uh, problems in your family or your marriage or with your children, uh, money matters, uh, your attitude, just about anything, you've got sin in your life, you can go to the Word of God and find an answer for it. And uh, if you don't know the answer, uh, go to someone and say, would you help me? find the answers in the Word of God that will apply to my life. But uh, the problem with our world today, and a lot of people uh, have all the answers, and that's why they don't turn to God. But what I've found out is when people think they've got all the answers is when they make the biggest mess out of things. Uh, and then when life's upside down, then they turn to God and start wanting God to unravel and, and fix things and put it back. And that's okay. God understands that. And God worked that into the equation. When he, uh, when he brought salvation to this world, he knew man was going to mess up. And he had that covered. So don't feel bad when you mess up and want God to, to fix you back up because uh, God, God knew we had that coming. But I won't talk to us tonight for a little while. Uh, about uh, learning and teaching. Learning and teaching. You have to learn before you can teach. And uh, so let's see what the Word of God says about that. 2 Timothy chapter 2 says... Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus, and the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ, no man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. And if a, if a man also strive for masteries, yet is he not crowned, except he strive lawfully. The husbandman that laboreth must be first partaker of the fruits. Consider what I say, and the Lord give thee understanding in all Thing. So let's uh, start at the beginning and just break that down a little bit, uh, sentence by sentence, and see what, what God would say to us tonight. So first he said, uh, my son, be strong 
in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. Now, I don't know if you know much about grace, but uh, uh, there's, there's such thing as a grace period. Uh, usually with every bill that you get. Anybody get bills here besides me? A few of you. Uh, there will be a total that you owe, and it'll, it'll say, uh, Brother Chris, pay by uh, July the 15th. And then right below that is another date, and that would be the grace period because after that date, then the rate increases and then if you don't pay that and they come get you or they take away whatever it is you're paying for or they turn your lights off or do something but uh, you get a grace period so if you don't get it paid by uh, a certain time then uh, you got a little grace and you can still get it paid and not go to jail or get shot so uh, thank God for grace but God has grace, and that is that we don't get what we deserve. The mistakes that we've made, the, the mess that we've got ourselves into, God says, I'm going to give you grace. I'm not going to shoot you right between the eyes or beat you over the head because you've been such a dumb dumb. Uh, I'm going to love you anyway. You hadn't, you hadn't listened to one word that was written in the Word of God. You hadn't, you haven't obeyed me at all, but I'm giving you grace. And I'm gonna love you anyway, and you come on with the, all your baggage and all your trouble and all your mistakes, and you can just simply repent. Now that's a pretty good deal right there. It don't cost you extra. It's not a penalty fee, it's not a late charge. He just says repent. And that just simply means you tell God you're sorry. For your mistakes and your past and your mess ups and your mess and all that and uh, say God I want you to forgive me I know I made a mess but I need you to forgive me and God says I forgive you wow that's pretty good grace right there now, I don't know if you've ever been in a courtroom and never had to stand before a judge but uh, sometimes you have to you have to ask the judge for grace or for mercy they got, uh, but look, Judge, I, I know I messed up, but I'm asking for mercy. Be merciful to me. But thankful that God is full of grace and mercy, and he extends it to all of mankind. Isn't that wonderful? That's the kind of God that I serve. And uh, the, the problem is a lot of people don't see God like that. They see God as a, a big old bad uh, man that's going to send people to hell if they don't straighten up. Well, God's given everybody an opportunity to make things right. God's given every uh, opportunity for you to be able to go to heaven. But a lot of people just continue to turn their back on the grace and mercy of God and walk away from that. And so, uh, but he said for us to be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. Let, let me just stop right there for a moment. Let's talk about being strong. Now, uh, we like to be strong in a lot of areas of our life. Some people want to be strong in, in their personality. Some people want to be strong in their emotions. They want to be, uh, some people want to be physically strong. And they, they'll go to the gym and work out and, and lift weights and eat right and all that kind of stuff because they want to be strong. But let me tell you, the most important area of your life to be strong in is to be strong in the Lord. And uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 16 says, Watch ye, stand fast in the faith, quit you like men, be strong. So we are commanded by the Word of God to be strong. Ephesians 6.10, a, a passage that most everybody can quote, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. It goes on to tell us to put on the whole armor of God. That's how we become strong in God, is with the helmet of salvation and the breastplate of righteousness and the shield of faith and all those things that are listed there. But... He's encouraging us 
to be strong in God. Let me tell you why you need to be strong in the Lord. Because you're, you're actually fighting. You're fighting every day. Every day is a battle. And the enemy of your soul, the enemy uh, of this world, if you will, the devil, Satan, whatever you want to call him, he's your enemy and he's fighting you. He's fighting your mind. He's fighting your health. He's fighting your success. He's going to fight against your family. He's going to fight against your happiness. Anybody ever had depression? You don't have to raise your hand, but uh, you, you ever fought that? You know what that is? That's a spirit from the enemy that is fighting against you. God wants you to be happy. God wants you to rejoice. How many times in the Word of God do we read where he said, Rejoice, and again I say rejoice. Rejoice every more. Clap your hands. Sing a new song. Amen. All those things. It's talking about being happy and, and, and being cheerful and enjoying life. But the devil wants just the opposite. So he's going to fight you. And that's why we must be strong. Let's read another scripture, 1 John 2, 14. He said, I have written unto you, fathers, because you have known him that is from the beginning. I have written unto you, young men, because you are strong and the word of God abideth in you and ye have overcome the wicked one. It's the one we're talking about here tonight. So there's a correlation between being strong and overcoming the wicked one. So you need to be strong in the Lord so that you can fight back against the devil. Number one, the devil doesn't fight fair. Anybody remember anybody in school that didn't fight fair? They, they, they'd come up behind you and blindside you or uh, kick you while you're down or, uh, I mean, just all kind of ways that they would... They'd find to, to not fight fair. Well, the devil doesn't fight fair. He'll kick you when you're down. He'll get you when you're weak. He'll, uh, he, he knows your weaknesses, and so uh, he doesn't fight fair. But this scripture said that if we are strong and the word of God abideth in you, then you can overcome the wicked one. So that's what we're doing here tonight. We're getting the word of God inside of us so we can be strong enough to overcome the wicked one because nobody chooses to be defeated all the time. Nobody wants to be beat up by the devil all the time. Nobody wants to be sad all the time. Now, I've met some people that, that just look like they're mad at the world, and, and the, the problem is they don't know how to be happy. They've never received the joy of the Lord. And, and, and to be honest with you, you're probably around people like that, and, and they get mad at you. I'll just tell you, they don't even like you because you're so happy. You've got the key. You're overcoming the wicked one. You're strong in the Lord, and you're able to tell the devil where to go. You're able to tell the devil when to get off, and you just keep on smiling and singing, and you can have a flat tire, and you just, you just keep right on going. You can have a, 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 a bad week, get laid off, and you can still laugh and, and rejoice and say, God's got this. We're going we're gonna to keep going. We're going to make it. It's going to be all right. Amen? Why? Because you're strong in the Lord, because you have the Word abiding in you, because you're able to overcome the wicked one. And it must be a sad life for people that, that have allowed the devil to overcome them instead of them being able to overcome him. So we, we must be strong. Now there's something uh, evidently in this First John chapter 2 when he said, because ye are strong and the word of God abideth in you, lets me know that there's something about having the word of God in you that makes you strong. You don't just wake up one day and say, okay, I'm strong today. No. You got to get the word of God in you because, you know, even Jesus Christ, when he had a fight with the devil, the only way that he could win was with the word of God. 
Every time the devil tried to pick on him, he would quote a scripture to him. He would tell him, that ain't going to work because the Bible said this. You're not going to get me because the Bible said that. So the word of God is going to give you the ammunition you need to fight back against the Satan. Uh, and let me tell you, the devil don't want you to know this. And the devil's fighting some of you right now to not even listen because he don't want you to hear the secret. See, I'm, I'm giving you, I'm loading your gun for you. Because when you go home tonight and the devil starts talking to you, now you've got a way to fight back and you can overcome the wicked one. So our strength comes from the Word of God. Your strength gives you the power to be an overcomer. You don't, you don't, have, to, you don't have to give in to, to, to your addictions. You don't have to give in to your wants and desires. You don't have to come in, give in to your habits anymore. You can be an overcomer. I say overcomer. That means you're able to overcome things. You're able to, to step over. You're able to get past. You're able to put things behind you. Things that used to hold you back. Things that used to block you. Now you can overcome that. You can come over to the other side. That's what an overcomer is. Somebody that comes over. Before you had an obstacle that was keeping you from getting to where God wants you to go, but now you come over that and you got that past you, it's behind you. You don't worry about that anymore. You're not tempted to, to, to do drugs anymore, are you? You've overcome that. You're an overcomer. Now, used to, that was a problem. That was something, big problem. That was something in front of you. But now that you're an overcomer, you've come over it, and that's all behind you. And as long as you don't look back, as long as you keep going, you can continue to be an overcomer. Now, the, the problem is, is the devil knows what you have overcome. So that doesn't mean he's going to quit fighting you. That means he's going to put something else in front of you. So you've got to continue in the word. He said, if you are my disciples and continue in my word and my word abide in you, then you're my disciple. So you, you have to continue in the word because you've got to keep being an overcomer. You don't just overcome one thing and say, okay, I slide the rest of the way. No, there's something else. It's an obstacle. And you go over that, and then you overcome the next and the next and the next. And so uh, you get strong in Christ. Now, what, what being strong in the Lord, what that means, or let me tell you what it does not mean. That does not mean that you're strong within yourself. Now, the devil would love for you to think that you've got all the strength, that you've got all the answers, that I can do this. Oh, I got this. Don't worry about this. Let me tell you, the Bible said to take heed when you think you stand, lest you fall. When you think you got it figured out, when you think you got it under control, that's when you're going to have the biggest trouble. What you've got to do is realize that your help comes from the Lord. David said it like this, I look to the hills from which cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord. He knew that, that, that no matter what situation he was in, that he needed God as his help. He needed God to be his strength. Uh, another passage said, He is my refuge and my strength, my very present help in time of trouble. So the devil would like for you to think and get to a place where, oh, I got this, been there, done that, don't worry about it. No, every day that you live, you need to rely on God. God, I need your help today. Because without God inside of me, I'm going to do something stupid. Without me listening to the voice of God, I'm going to make some bad decisions. Anybody ever made bad decisions besides me? Boy, sometimes those things really cost. Sometimes they cost in money. Sometimes they cost in time. Sometimes they cost in your health. Amen. And so we, we, we must rely on God. The Bible said a good man's steps are ordered by the Lord. Well... If the Lord is going to order your steps, 
you're going to have to walk in the order. Anybody work anywhere where you take orders? Even, even, even uh, furniture places, I think they have, they have tickets that you have to follow. You have, you have orders that come, come in. If you work any kind of restaurant, you have, you have orders. Even some of you nurses get, get orders maybe through the computer or something, and they, and they tell you what patient to see and what, what uh, medicine to give them and all that. You know what? You've got to follow those orders for you to accomplish what you're, what you're supposed to do. So when God orders our steps, we've got to walk in that path. When God shines the light, you've got to walk in that direction. He said, walk in the light as I am in the light. In other words, wherever he goes, that's where i got to go. So I need God not only to order my steps, but I need him to give me enough sense to shut up and to follow his orders. Amen. But the, the, the problem is the devil wants people to think, I can do this on my own. I don't need any help. I don't need anybody to tell me what to do. Well, I'll just tell you, I'll be the first in line to tell you, I need somebody to tell me what to do. Amen. In a lot of areas of my life, I need, I need help. I need direction. I need wisdom. Was it Solomon that said that in the multitude of counsel, there's safety? In other words, the more good advice you get, Brother Mike, the safer it's going to be. Before you invest, before you venture off on something, before you uh, move somewhere, before you do this or do that, you get a lot of counsel before you make that decision. Let me tell you, the more counsel you can get from God, the better off you're going to be. If I'm going to work on your airplane, you better hope I'm getting counsel. Amen. Because I don't have a clue. And I'll tell you I don't have a clue. But there's some people that step right up and say, oh, yeah, I can do that. Here, let's move and start twisting stuff and moving stuff and turning stuff and pulling stuff. And I'm like, I ain't flying. I ain't, get, I ain't getting on that plane. Amen. So we have to realize that we need direction we need instruction we need help let's be honest we've never lived this life before amen we've only lived up to this day we don't have any clue about tomorrow and i'll tell you what up until this point i don't know of any of us that's batting a thousand and some of you if you look back behind you you got a pretty bad batting record and you, you might ought to sit down and say, hey, I'm not even going to the bathroom tomorrow until I ask somebody because I've really messed some stuff up. You know, I don't even know whether to blow my nose or not. I, I, need, I need some help with this. I'm, I'm having trouble. But when it comes to the things of God, we need direction in our life. Amen. And I promise you, with God's help, our tomorrows can be brighter than our yesterdays if we learn to trust in God. So we, we, we be strong in God. Now, that, that doesn't mean that we're strong within ourselves. It, it, matter of fact, it's just the opposite. It, the Apostle Paul said, it's in my weakness that he's made strong. And so, in other words, it's, it's when I can realize that I don't know it all, Brother Shannon, that's when God can really do the most. When I can just tell him, God, God I'm weak. That's when God takes over and says, I got this for you. But when you take it on your own and you try to do it, you ever, you ever let your kid uh, sit in your lap and drive when they, when they were real, real young and, and they wanted to drive and you wanted to make them feel like they're doing something, so you're just driving around the house or, or something? Well, you're, you're doing most of the driving, but every once in a while, they get big enough, Brother Adam, they'll grab that steering wheel and they got a mind of their own. They're like, I got this. And that's when a mess really happens. I don't care if it's the lawnmower, the tractor, the golf cart, or your automobile. But if you let them have it all by themselves, you, you, you can really mess things up. And that's the way it is with God. As long as we let him take the wheel. Oh, I just feel like singing, Jesus, take the wheel. Amen. 
Matter of fact, he can take the gas pedal, the brake, the gear shift. I'll just move over in the, in the passenger seat and let him take it all because I have no idea what I'm doing here. Just, just God, it's in my weakness, Paul said, that he is made strong. In other words, when, when I am weaker, he is stronger. Let's just be honest. God needs to be God, and God cannot be God if we don't need him. We don't want God sitting up there working crossword puzzles while we're saying, oh, I got this, don't worry about it. Don't, don't tell me nothing. Don't tell me where to go, what to do. No, every day we need to seek his direction. Every day we say, God, I'm too, I'm too weak for today. I, I, I need your direction. I need you to order my steps. I need you to, to show me where to go, what to do, what to say. Let me tell you, if you will allow God he will direct every step of your life. Matter of fact, let me just give you some good news. The reason you're here tonight is because God has ordered your steps. Brother Chris, there's no possible way, and, and everybody else in here, that you would be here tonight if it wasn't for God ordering your steps. You look back on your life, Brother Mike, and all the places you've been and all the things that you've done, there's no way you could have pinpointed all that and ended up right back in here where you are tonight if you'd have done it on your own. Amen. It's God ordering our steps. And that's for one thing that we ought to really be thankful for is that God loves us enough that he's got his hand on us. Now, sometimes we, we take the left turn and we mess up and we, we get off at the wrong exit, but God always brings it right back around and, uh, and, and, and brings us back to where we're supposed to be. I got an object lesson I'm working on and uh, I can't wait to, to share it with you, but it has to do with, with uh, uh, not going exactly where God wants you to go and, and what, what he's wanting you to fulfill in your life. So uh, y'all get ready for that. We may do that in a, a week or two if I don't forget it. But we got to be strong. Now, to be strong in God is to be meek within ourselves. To be strong in God is to know that we don't know. In other words, if there's one thing I know is I know that I don't know. And that's the best thing you can know. Amen. So be strong in the word, be strong in prayer, strong in the spirit, strong in God. Why is it important to be strong? I think there's three reasons that I, that I thought of real quickly to be strong. Number one, you got to be strong just to survive. Just to make it in this world you got to be strong. Just to get out of bed, perform, just to get up, make it through the day, hold life together, you got to be strong because the devil will beat you down. Ain't that encouraging? Amen. But secondly, because I believe we ought to do more than just survive, you need to be strong to thrive. Everybody say thrive. I believe God wants us to do more than survive. I believe God wants us to thrive. I, want, I, I believe God wants you to be above and beyond, not better than anybody else, but I believe God wants you to have more, to do more, to, to progress more than the average Joe. Amen. So you need to be strong to thrive. And thirdly, you need to be strong for somebody else. If you're not strong, you can't help anybody else. Brother Inman said right before church, said, we're, 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 we're uh, uh, complicating this. Said, the Lord said, uh, love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy might, and love thy neighbor as thyself. Well, let me just tell you, you can't love your neighbor the way God wants you to love him if you hadn't taken care of yourself. If you're not strong enough to pick somebody else up, you're not going to be able to fulfill what God wants you to do. 
So you need to, you, you need to uh, be strong so you can help those that are weak. What on earth would we do if all the doctors stayed sick all the time? Who would help us? Right? Go in the ER and need, need your uh, arm sewed up. I said, well, the guy that does the sewing, he's, uh, he's banged up himself. Tough luck. And somewhat, sometimes spiritually, that's the way we become. We, we become so weak that we can't help others. All the attention, all the care, and all the help has to be directed toward us. And God's saying, you need to be strong enough to be helping somebody else. And here you are requiring all the help. So uh, don't be satisfied with just surviving. We ought to, there ought to be a desire within us to thrive. Everybody say thrive. I like that word, don't you? I mean, it just sounds good. Thrive. You, you, shouldn't, you shouldn't be satisfied to uh, just barely get by. You shouldn't be satisfied. Just, now, I know the Bible says having food and raiment, be content. That's, that's, uh, that's good. You shouldn't desire uh, a bunch of things that's, that's not useful or needful. But there ought to be something inside of you that wants to do better, wants to have something, wants to accomplish something, wants to be in a place where you can help others. You shouldn't, you, you shouldn't live with the mentality that, that, that I'm always going to be on the receiving end. The Bible said it's more blessed to give than to receive. I want to be a blessing. I want to be the one that, that helps somebody. I want to be the one that's able to give sometime. I don't want people having to buy my lunch. I want to buy their lunch. I believe it. it, it I, Brother Gary, I feel better about buying somebody else's lunch than I do them buying my lunch. Well, I didn't get any amens there. Maybe you hadn't ever bought anybody's lunch. It's fun. You ought to try it. Brother Bishop was telling me last night, they were in Cracker Barrel, and somebody came by and just picked up their ticket and, and uh, said, y'all have a great day. He didn't even know who it was. Praise the Lord anyhow. Amen. That's clean living right there. Amen. But, but you know what? As excited as they, they were, mom and dad, both mother especially, because she, she don't like to buy nothing. But uh, as, as happy as they were to have their lunch bought, I guarantee you, whoever it was that bought their lunch was happier than they were. If they weren't, they wouldn't have done it. They didn't do it for show, because there wasn't no... TV cameras there, and I don't, I don't guess they posted it on Facebook or anything. Uh, so it, it's a blessing to be in that position. So don't be comfortable with just existing. Grow, produce, help others. Now let's uh, let's get back to our lesson. We got a couple of minutes here, so we got to be strong in grace. And he said, and the things that thou hast heard of me. The things that thou hast heard. So that means we got to learn something. We got to hear something. And he said, the things that you've heard among many witnesses, there's, there's, there's plenty of you that are, that are around. And uh, he said, the same, in other words, the same thing that you're hearing come from these great men that, that are coming to you. He said, the things that you have heard, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others. So there's, there's the lesson right there. Boy, it took me a long time to get to the Bible lesson, didn't it? That's okay. Uh, he said, the, the, the things that you have heard, those are the same things that you commit to faithful men who shall be able to teach others. So you got to take what you're learning and then you got to turn around and teach others. I think you need two people in your life at all times, two close people. You don't have to be best bosom buddies. You don't have to like the same thing. But you need to, you need to uh, purposely pick out two people that you're going to put into your life at least for a, a season. 
Now, one of these people needs to be somebody that you're going to learn from, somebody that's ahead of you, somebody that's smarter than you, more spiritual than you, better than you, making more money than you, or whatever. They, they need to be somebody that you can learn from. Everybody say learn from. And then you need somebody else in your life that you can help them, that you've got something to offer them, that you can give wisdom, you can give knowledge, you can give spiritual advice, you can give uh, emotional strength or whatever. But you need those two people, and you need to, to be in contact with them constantly, not every day, but on a weekly basis or bi-weekly basis, have lunch or have a time to get together and from the person that you're learning from, sit down, shut up, and let them teach you. Ask them a question and then receive their knowledge, receive their wisdom, let them, let them speak into your life. And then the, the, the other person, you seek them out and you take them to lunch or you invite them over and you sit down and you pour wisdom into them. Tell them how they can be better in life, how things that, that, that will help them avoid some pitfalls in their life. Well, that, that was free. It's not scriptural. So he said, the things that you've heard, you give it to faithful men that they may teach others. 1 Corinthians 14, 19 says it's important that we teach others. It's important that we uh, expand on what we know and that we uh, give that to someone. He said, yet in the church, I had rather speak five words with my understanding that by my voice I might teach others also than 10,000 words in an unknown tongue. Now, I know a lot of people that think that if you stood up and spoke uh, 10,000 words in an unknown tongue, that everybody would think, wow, they are super spiritual. They must really be close to God. The Apostle Paul said, I'd rather speak five words that's in my understanding, five words that people understand that will give them wisdom, that will give them understanding, that will, you know what? It's better, especially if there's a, a brand new person, if there's somebody that, that's lost in sin, somebody that's battling things in their life, it's better for you to, to, to walk up to them in clear, plain English and say, Jesus loves you, he died for you, you can go to the altar and repent of your sins and God will forgive you of everything in your past. It's better to say those handful of words right there than it is for you to get in their ear and speak in an unknown tongue all night long. You may be seated. It's in the Bible. Well, musicians come. Hebrews 5 and 12, we'll try to bring this to a landing. He said, for when the time ye ought to be teachers, in other words, he said, there comes a time in our, in our walk with God that we ought to teach somebody. There comes a time where you, you're, you're not just a saint anymore. You're not just somebody that sits on a pew. You ought to be setting somebody down and say, here, let me instruct you. Let me show you what the Word of God says. Let me show you what I've learned that, that God has done in my life. He said, there comes a time when you ought to be teachers. He said, there's a problem. You have need that one teach you again. Again. What does that mean? It means somebody's hard-headed. That means somebody didn't get it the first time. That means somebody had been in church long enough that they ought to be doing right and helping somebody else, and now we're having to go back and teach them again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God. He said, You're, we're having to go back to the first grade material. We've got to go back to first steps. We've got to go back to the 
to the basics and teach you again and you're supposed to be at a place where you can help others so that lets me know that one scripture right there is all I need biblical proof that every child every believer of God has a responsibility to number one to be learning and number two to be teaching somebody else now let me tell you you don't have to have a college degree you don't have to go to Bible seminary you, you don't have to have been in church 20 years to be able to help somebody else here's proof right here God ordained Jesus Christ himself sent a man to be an evangelist or a missionary if you will one of the worst sinners that's ever described in Scripture as soon as Jesus delivered him he sent him back into the city to teach the Word of God and to talk about the things that God had done in his life the man in the tombs he was naked he was screaming living in the cemetery had been kicked out of the city nobody could control him they'd been tying him up with chains and nothing was working and God cast a bunch of demons out of him and the first thing he said brother John he said I want to pack up and go with you and your disciples and you know what Jesus told him he said go back to your city and tell others you go be the teacher you go and evangelize your city you go back and share what God has done let me tell you you, you don't you don't need a, a, a lot of uh, formal education or a lot of years under your belt to tell somebody what God's done for you amen so in closing for sure this time 1 Corinthians 9 27 said but I keep under my body and bring it into subjection lest that by any means when I have preached to others I myself should be a castaway so this again establishes the principle that we ought to be teaching others but he warns us and he says you got to be careful that when you're teaching others and when you're trying to help other people he said you better keep your eye on yourself because if you're not careful you become a castaway it, 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 it never ceases to amaze me there's people that, that that jump in and say man I want to do this I want to I want to be used of God I want to be in the ministry I want to uh, get this and get that and and you watch them for a little while and they can't even live right theirself hardly they can't worship they can't get involved they can't uh, be on their a game if you will well let me tell you people are watching your life more than they're listening to what you're saying Woo. before you yourself can be a castaway before you can teach others before you can be the leader before you can uh, you you, you got to get on fire before you can light somebody else's fire amen you got to be enthused before you can enthuse somebody else anybody ever ever ran across a red-hot salesman I mean from the moment you come in the door there well hi there how are you doing let me tell you what we've got today step right over here you've never seen one quite like this oh I know they got one down there but let me tell you about this one and boy I mean they are sold on you know how they get sold on that they went to school before you got there they read books they have already been taught and like I preach Sunday they got it in their bones amen and, and, and let me tell you you'll never be able to sell somebody else if you're not sold on it yourself one thing I like to always ask a salesman, do you have one? If I go to the Toyota dealership, what kind of car do you drive, sir? If he come up in there in a Ford, I ain't buying no Toyota from him. Amen. He don't even believe in it himself. So before somebody tells me about God or about the power of God or how good God is, I'm going to look and see, are they really worshiping God? Are they on the front row or the back row? 
Did they get here early or come in late? Are they the first one to stand up or the last one? Woo. Well, y'all ready to go home, I can tell. So we got to learn and teach. We got to be disciples and make disciples. We got to go, grow and go. Amen. We got to receive and give. Remember the story Jesus told about the man that had to go and borrow the loaves of bread. He said, lend me three loaves. Why? Because it wasn't for him. It was, he said, because I got a friend in need. He didn't have anything to share with somebody that was in need. So let me tell you if, you, if you never study the Word of God, if you never get into a Bible study, you never invite somebody to come and teach the, the Bible in your house for yourself, do it just so that you've got knowledge and, and, and something that you can give somebody else. You see, every sermon that comes across this pulpit may not necessarily just be for your four and no more. Brother Taylor, it may be that somebody at work tomorrow is going to ask you about something and what you got yesterday at the, at the house of God is not just for you, but it's for you to give them. So you don't want to have to get up in the middle of the night and go bother somebody and say, lend me three loaves because I got a friend that's in need. Amen. Let's stand together. If you uh, care to, when you go home, keep reading 2 Timothy chapter 2, and you will find verse 15, study to show thyself approved, and uh, several other passages in there that will just back up what we're uh, talking about here tonight. But I want to learn from the Word of God. But not only do I want to learn, I want to share with somebody else. I want to help somebody else. Amen. Let's thank God for his word tonight. God, we love you. We thank you for this word that's been spoken into our spirit. And uh, we pray that uh, your word would grow within us, that we would be able to uh, go in you, and that you would uh, uh, order our steps, lighten our path, Lord. Let us do what you would cause us to do in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We're glad to have Alex and Jamie, Julie. Alex and Julie uh, with us at Victory tonight for the first time. Won't you give them a warm welcome? And uh, I believe God sent them our way. And uh, they've already been a blessing uh, to me and my house. So uh, y'all uh, stop by and say hello to them, meet them. You're dismissed. Sunday's Father's Day. Be here, bring your father, all fathers, bring all your children. And we're going to have a great time. You're dismissed.